it's 2024 and a lot has been changed on Lightroom. Especially in 2023, a lot of changes has made Lightroom Classic a lot different. So I'm going to take you guys on a walkthrough through Lightroom. If you want to skip everything and go straight to a chapter, I've divided everything in chapters for every tool in Lightroom. So you can check out how the tool works. If you have questions about the tool, you can ask me in the comments. and I'll help you out explaining a little bit more about the tool. If you want me to make a video about the tool, let me know in the comments. I will maybe make a video about a special tool. So let's dive into the computer and check out the latest version of Lightroom in 2024. So we start out from the beginning, we open up Lightroom Classic and important to know when you're using Lightroom, divide everything in a catalog. So in this case, I'm gonna call it um, YouTube Rock 2024. For everything you do in Lightroom, make a new catalog so Lightroom stays fast. If you throw too much photos in Lightroom, it will be it become slow. This, always been a problem of Lightroom so make catalogs it's easier for you to find your photos and for your workflow so we have no photos in this catalog so we're going to add some photos we do it in the first tab and let's call it YouTube 2004 walkthrough so I like to shorten everything because I'm very dyslectic so it's make makes life easier for me because I'm if I'm going to type full words I'm probably going to make a typo um important to know um if you see my Lightroom interface it looks a little bit different from yours and that's because this upper part all these um tabs I disable so if you press right uh, right mouse button on this black bar or maybe different color or maybe you got a different color scheme you can pull them back but i don't use the these ones i only use library and development so i always turn them off because i like a clean interface this works better for me so we're in the library where we import our photos so the most easiest way to import something in your photos if you made your um, folder you go stand in the folder and then you just Grab, you grab the folder in computer like this you can choose your photos and you can just drag them in Lightroom where's my Lightroom so much apps just drag them here and Lightroom will automatically um, select them for importing so also important if you want to import them I always build smart previews so I have a copy of the photos on my hard drive so if I'm lost the location of my photos I still know where I still can use the photos for Instagram, for instance, because they're just small photos. So I select the, the folder I just made here, this side, select the folder. Develop settings means that you can add your presets. So we're not going to use presets and just import the photos. So Lightroom starts importing my photos. Sometimes if you ask, if you want to uh, attach the addresses to the photo, I will say, no, I don't need addresses on my photo. But Lightroom will import photos and it will build smart previews. Smart previews, I always choose it because it makes a preview and your Lightroom just becomes faster. As you can see, I can go really quick to my Lightroom, no lagging or stuff. I have a fast computer, but the smart previews makes it also very faster. So we got the photos right here. So next step is development. This is the part where you came for because all the tools in Lightroom. So. On the left side, we got our presets. So you probably got a lot of Lightroom standard presets. I've got only got my own presets I made myself. I've built a lot of presets, so I could choose my latest presets I'm working on. Just put it right on. Well, it doesn't work in this photo because it's just very... Um, well, let, let's try this photo. So I could use my preset on this photo, but my photos are mainly wedding photography. So it looks a little bit different on these are travel photos. Um, for this tutorial, I've chosen travel photos because it's a little more relatable than wedding photography. And let's just jump to the tools. So the upper part of your tools is the histogram. And the histogram shows you the dark parts and the light parts. As you can see, there's not... There's no white in this photo, so uh, if there will be white in the photo, you will see the hair. So it's from dark to light. But I can pull this to the light side. That's the cool thing about Lightroom. Every tool, everything has a function. So when I pull this to over here, the photo instantly gets better. And I can pull the dark a little bit back, like this. 
I can hold my option key on Mac, I think control on Windows. Sorry, I don't know if it's control because I don't use Windows. Sorry, guys. You can see where the Instagram breaks. So if we pull there, it breaks. So this becomes full black. And if I hold my option key and I just pull it, I'll make pull it back like this. You can see it doesn't have to break maybe a little bit like this. So I've got really dark blacks. And here I can do the same thing with the whites, so maybe like this. So the, this is what you see here is the this is full white, so there's no detail in it. So I don't want that really like like this. So now I get the the the, the black is black and the white is white in my photo. I get a full contrast on the photo. So next up is the basics of your photo. Let's choose another photo for the basics. Here are are, are my dogs. Foo and, iris, uh, Foo and Iris, the border collie in Labrador. In the basics, you can change your white balance and you can change the contrast of a photo. So the white balance, you can use it automatically like this with the white balance picker. You choose a neutral color like here, the white, and it makes a neutral color. It's very early in the morning, so it's a little bit bluish, the light. But I don't like the, the automatic settings. If you're a photographer and you want to learn more about color, color grading, just use the use your use a slider um, by eye. Just learn how, how it works. Understand what the purple or the green does to the photo. Learn to balance it. That, I think that's way more interesting to learn. Because it's do you want to have to like the most neutral color or do you want to make your version of the photo? That's what you have to think about. After the white balance, you go to the exposures. So you get a full exposure of your photo. You can make it brighter or, or less bright. If you've chosen a, a slider and you like, oh, I don't like the, the slider settings, you can double tap it and it goes back to the neutral uh, setting of the slider. So you can change your contrast like this. But there's just a way to change the contrast because there are way more ways to use the contrast. You can pull up your highlights. You can pull up your shadows, especially when our black dogs, these like velvet black. You can pull it up so you, you can see iris like here. So iris becomes visible. Pull the highlights down, shadows a little bit down. But that's the contrast. Also, you can give it more texture, especially in the sand. You can see the, the you see the paws here. If you pull up the texture, it's way more visible. I don't like a lot of texture, but you could add some texture. Also, clarity makes the photo a little bit more. It's more like a contrast texture kind of thing together. Then you get your vibrance of your color a little bit more. Powerful punchy color, also the saturation, so it's over um, all the colors, like a color boost. Then we go to the tone curves. And the tone curves is the part where we play the most, I guess. Uh, I like the tone curves. So the tone curves have five different curves. The first curve is more like a, um, a contrast curve. We can change the highlights of the photo you see up top. You can cha change the shadows. It's basically the same as the basics there. And I don't use it that much. Then we get the pure the pure contrast. And this is the more important part. I always put a point in the middle. And you can grab it right here and just pull a little bit up. You can also do it with, with, a, with a lighter part. You can pull it up or less. You can play around with it. And if you want to, a lot of people make a little S curve. This is like a very strange S curve. More like this. A lot of people do it like this with an S-curve to make the photo more interesting. Because it adds contrast to your photo. And light here. So a lot of people do. Like this. That's what you can do with the tone curves contrast. Then you got the, the, the red and the, the green. Same thing you can add a red or green. But if you want to do it right, uh, you hold your option key again. I think it's control on Mac. A little bit like this. You can just give it a little bit more like a vibe like this. Up like this. I will give it a little bit more light because it's so dark for you on the screen, probably. So like this. That's another way I normally do it, but just to show you guys. Again, here we can add some color here. If you move it around, you can see that the color does something. So it is more the colder color for the highlights. And same thing here. The highlight gives get some colder color because it's snow. It's always cold. And for the bottom part, you want a little bit warmer. And now you did you added 
adjusted it with your tone curves. And if you press this button, you see this, there was a photo like it was. This with the tone curves. Easy way to make your photo look better. There are a lot of, I made more videos about tone curves and how to um, uh, edit them. Color mixer used to be called HSL. You can see it here. Um, it, most people think of Lightroom, they use this this tool. I don't use it that much. I use it as as, as a as a like finishing uh, on the, uh, like a finisher. I don't do do too much with it because I like the color mixer better. Or the tone curve, sorry. So if you press this button, you can change your hue. The hue is your color of your of your well the color. So you can change the color. So the green can go to the orange. As you see here, or we can make the green really green. And then you got the saturation. So how much, how vibrant is the color? That's, that's the saturation. So we can make it more vibrant. And luminance is how bright is that color. So we can make it really bright. Same thing. We can do it again with with the rocks here. Let's put a little purple. Let's make it a little blue. Why not? Let's make a crazy photo. Saturation of it. So you can make it more blue or less blue. I can make it even black and white. I like the black and white vibe a little bit better because the rocks are blue. Also the luminance was if you use the luminance, it doesn't do that much because um, you pulled out the saturation, but still you can change it up as you can see. And if you do a little more saturation, like the blue and do the luminance, it has more effects. Oh, sorry. Like this, you see. There's also a point color The nowadays, a point color you can more can be more precise so you, you can choose this thing pick your color green and you can say well i don't like the green i want the green to be all more green or more yellowy 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 <laughs> yellowy um same thing with the rocks now it's blue we can say more neutral or you can make it more bluey you can go which color you want let's make it more neutral you can say well the roof so you can pick all those colors and you want to make the roof a little bit more red to give a more contrast to the photo again you can see it here this, so this slider means from left to right as you can see here and this but from the bottom to the top this slider and this slider is just the luminance of what you see let's go put it back you can visualize that range you're selecting. If you visualize, you can see everything that has to do with this color you chosen. So that's the point color um, mixer. And again, uh, if you want to see the effect of it, press this so you can see what the photo was and how it is right now. Then we go to the color grading tool. The color grading tool, a lot of people use it to do, use it to make the photo um, give that special vibe. It's like split toning. Uh, that's what, how it's used to be called. You get your midtones, shadows, highlights. Your highlights, of course, is this part of your photo. So if you change your highlights to do it more extreme, you'll see it has effect on the highlight part of the photo. That's the roof here and uh, this part there. So also, if you chosen a color and you double tap it it goes back to neutral if you use your option key on your mac and just put a little bit like this and then choose a color so if it's the blue because it's the mountain is blue then we can change like the shadows well if you just pull it right here you can see everything that's involved with the shadows so i think we should go a little bit to the greens or maybe the orange side here you can pull it like this and now you got the midtones. If you want to see what the midtones are, just pull it like this, and you can see what the midtones are. And again, you can pull, it, you can do it like this. And if you press this button, you see the before and after. It's it's this is a very nuanced a tool. Don't go too crazy with it. I think you do it very neutral, very very neutral, very nuanced. Then we get lens corrections. Well, lens corrections is if um, so every camera lens has a, like a vignette and has like an, uh, a chromic aberration. So what Lightroom does is just um, pulls that effect away. So it contrabalances your photo. So if you press it, the photo will open up a little bit more. I use it. Sometimes I don't use it because I think it makes the photo worse. Sometimes I use it. It's depending standard. It's probably on in your Lightroom and it detects the color profile, your profile of your lens and 
is easy to use. You can also do it manually, wouldn't do that. Uh, just use the automatic function. Then we go to the effects. Well, effects sounds really, really cool, but the only thing it does is just makes a vignette, as you see here, a white or a black vignette, and the graining. That's the important part of the effect. So I like graining my photos. I could pull up like the graining. Maybe make it a little bit darker. You can see it. The graining of the photo, especially when you zoom in, like here. There's graining. There's no graining. I like graining. I use a lot of graining, like 50% of grading, especially on high-res photos, no problem. And if you use them, the vignettes, just use a little bit, not too much, because it's really, it's really ugly if you use it a lot. Then we go to the detail tab. So the detail tab is a sharpening tool. I uh, standard is always on. I don't like the sharpening because it's. I like the softness of a photo. So um, if you grab this photo. If you want to sharpen it a lot, and the best thing to do is to zoom in, sharpen it. You can see you get all the strange sharpness effect. You can change it with the radius and the details, but I just turn it off. You can use a little bit. I get a little bit sharper. Also, a denoise function, there's an AI function that denoises your photo. So if you get a lot of noise because you shot in high ISO and you, you, had too, you had not enough lights to fill up the ISO, you get grain or noise. Uh, you can fix the noise with the denoise function. So it's a cool little thing. I hope you never need it because if you need it, you probably did something wrong with the photo. The transform, uh, transform function is if you have a house, for instance. So, so everything is like... Is not straight. You can use this thing, and you can make can make your house straight like this. You follow the lines of the house on the photo like this, and it makes the photo stand right. There was a photo. This is a photo. So it makes your photo right, especially when you're a photographer of houses and stuff, and like it has like a strange form. You can change. Uh, you can change with this. Important is to have enough space around your photo. Or else it doesn't work because it crops your photo a lot. After the transfer tool, we get like an early access lens blur tool. I don't know if you got it in your Lightroom, but it's an early access thing. And we can, best thing to do, grab a photo of our dogs. And what it creates is like an, um, an, an AI lens blur. So how does it work? It visualizes your photo. So this is the, the sharp part, this is the unsharp part. So if I would say I want this part to be sharp, or this part, and the more white there is, the more there is sharp. And I want my Labrador to be sharp. I can do it like this, and if I now turn it off, oh, it's, a, it's still a little bit uh, buggy. She's sharp, he isn't sharp. Just, and if I change it up to the Border Collie, he'll be sharp and she won't be sharp. That's basically what it is. But if you, if you use something like this, just use it a little bit like this. Maybe you like it. I'm not a big fan of these artificial um, lens blur thingies. I think you should do it as a photographer. I have lenses that go to 1.2, uh, so I don't need a lens blur in, uh, in Lightroom. And it's very buggy because it still doesn't work really great. Then the calibration tool, one of my favorite tools. I always have it higher up in my, um, in my tools. Because the calibration tool, you can make your photo instantly look better. Look, what I do here, I made an autumn vibe. I use this tool a lot, so I can do it. I can do it from uh, just <laughs> without really thinking about it. I already know what to do, like this. So, maybe a little bit more light in the photo. So, with this, I just made a photo look better in just. 10 seconds. Turn it off. There was a photo. This with the calibration tool. So if you never touch the calibration tool, start using the calibration tool because it's really, really, really cool. You can do a lot of it with it. I, have a sp uh, I also have a video about the calibration tool. If you're curious about it, uh, be sure to check it out because it's it's amazing. A lot of people don't even realize that's what you, what you can do with a calibration tool. It works on a pixel level. It works very differently. But you can see if you're shooting... Um, Landscape thingies, it just works really, really well. So if you don't like the blues, you can go to your color grading. You can say, um, oh, sorry. You can go to the color mixer. 
white color, you say, okay, the blue, I don't like the blue. I want the blue a little bit be more neutral like this. And also the blue over here, because there's no more blue. A little, little bit more neutral is possible. As easy as it is. If you want to make a preset of this cool little um, preset, of this, 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 this photo edit, you can press preset, you can create a preset, you can create a new user preset, you can say, um, oh, no, no, you, 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 a new group, sorry. You can say um, Lightroom 2024. Yes, create, and I can call it Lightroom for nature reset. And now I've created a preset. If you go here, Lightroom 2024, I got my Lightroom 2004 preset. If I go to this photo and I'm like, oh, I want to edit this photo, I can use my preset. I still have to adjust the shadows and stuff. They can make the photo look better with just a simple preset. Probably this photo works like this. So let's edit on this photo. So also what's very important is how to export your photos. If you export your photos, there's shift, I have to look, shift command E is export of your photo. You can choose here your export settings. They speak for themselves. And if you want, if you like your export settings, you can edit and make a, a save of your export presets. And so you can easily use the same settings every time you 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 gotta uh, export your photos for Photoshop or sorry for uh, social media. It works perfectly. I can imagine that you're thinking there was a lot of information you gave me. I know, sorry, but it's 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 a lot of information. If you got questions about special tools or something, just ask me in the comments. Uh, I'm glad to help you with, with the tools because there's a lot of tools, a lot of things going on. But the most important thing about Lightroom, just try it out. Try it out, what it does per tool, just figure out the tool, understand the tool, and that's the only way to learn how to do it. If you do that, you'll be getting better every time you do it. If you want to see more of my content, want to see behind the video, behind the scenes videos of weddings I do or more editing stuff, go check out my channel. And, uh, and if you want to see more of my photos, go visit my Instagram because I do a lot of stuff on Instagram, photos and stuff. And if if you got suggestions on what kind of video you want to see next, just let me know in the comments and I hope to see you next time.